What's something you wish you started doing earlier in life? Brushing my teeth sad face no one made me when I was too little to care and by the time I wanted to do it for me the damage was done, but not too hard. I always brushed hard as heck, because that's what I was taught and that's what I thought I was supposed to do to get clean. I'm 23 now and my gums aren't real bad, but there's some irreversible receding already. Now I brush holding the very end of the handle between my index and thumb tip so there's no way I can brush too hard. Also 23 yo, and I brush kinda hard and long, just my mind think it isn't clean enough. This habit plus my weird childhood addiction to soft drinks is probably going to give me hell later in life. I've been drinking exclusively water for years and brushing at night and in the morning, but I just know my enamel is probably non-existent at this point. Your dentist will probably tell you if your enamel is gone. Mine did. Doesn't mean your teeth are suddenly ruined though. Mine's been gone for a long time with little issues. Just a little cold sensitivity. Being myself more. I remember I constantly changing my personality based on the friends I was hanging out with which made me very unhappy. But now that I started being myself around people that actually like me has made much more accepting of myself. Adapt to survive. It works with some people, but not with others. At the end of it you're so damn exhausted trying to constantly switch between personalities. You just say frick it and live alone as a hermit. Glad you found people who appreciate you. Not worrying about having lots of friends. In my younger years I tried to be friends with too many people at once and didn't have any solid friendships. Having a few really close friends is far better than many wishy-washy friends. I lost a lot of friends when I got sober, only occasionally miss that crazy it. Thought I was the only one. I've only got one friend left from my addict days. She never became addicted to anything and respects that I did and that I don't want that it around me anymore. I tried to keep friendships with many of those people. But everyone else tried to invite me to drug parties or just casually pulled out some of my preferred substances while we were chilling together. Offered me some. I guess they thought it was polite. And made me lose our respect for them. I'm happy to be sober, but it sucks that I have only one friend who knows me from before I was 22 and I got my act together. Same thing happened to me. It's as if everyone only liked the whacked out wild version of me. Almost instantly after I got sober almost every friend cut me out of their leaves. I've only got one friend left from those days, but I haven't spoken to her in a couple of years. It's strange and lonely and I'm happy to be sober, but I miss having people want me around. Being honest with the people around me, and not lying to myself about who I am. This one resonates. I'm trying to figure out how to do this more, because it seems like so many of my problems are caused by a fear of saying what I want or don't want in a situation. It's like a fear of confrontation, or a fear of rejection. But here's the thing. No matter what you say or do, someone is going to be a hater. So say what you want. Need now. As Dr. Seuss said, those that mind don't matter and those that matter don't mind. I hope I got that quote right. Telling MFS no. It's funny. Someone else replied with saying yes more often. Maybe the commonality is expressing yourself without worrying about what others think. Ding 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 ding. Hector Shio. Salamanca. LOL the comment below is about saying yes. Getting up early and just doing what needs to be done in a day, instead of putting it off forever. Update. I've been how I do this or how I got started. Honestly I got started by getting up early for work. Slowly it became my new norm to get up at 7am on my days off. The getting things done part was trickier. I guess I started by doing small things like cleaning or doing errands right away. Like if I was washing clothes, I wouldn't let them sit in the dryer. I would take them out right away and hang them up. Eventually it just became a routine and part of my life. I'm not good at getting up early, but I am good at doing things straight away now. Which is a good way to feel calmer and more together. Get up greater than make bed immediately. Come in from work greater than put shoes, bag, jacket away immediately. Cook greater than clean as you go. House is always nice to wake up and come home to. Can have guests short notice. Know where everything is. Nice. Cooking and cleaning as you go is pretty much the only way to do any semi-ambitious cooking project. If you just let dirty stuff accumulate, not only do you quickly run out of tools, mixing bowls, etc., but you also run out of available workspace. I guess this can be avoided if you own a massive kitchen with lots of counter space and lots of kitchen supplies. But most of us don't. So if you want to cook, like really cook, you have to start cleaning right away too. Reading. It's like being able to steal years of people's life experiences in just a few days without having to go through any of the bullet. I'll add to this. Writing. 
The typical response to this question is working out and flossing, but a lot of us already do that, or know that these things are important. A few years ago, well seven now actually, I made a New Year's resolution to write every single day, journal style. I surprised myself by sticking with it. The next year, I did the same. After the third or fourth year, it was a habit, a hobby, and a passion. Writing is the single most therapeutic activity I do. It's better than running, or hiking, or lifting. To put your problems on a document marginalizes them. It makes, almost, every problem immediately more manageable. Also, it's like a little time capsule. I can go back to this day five years ago and see exactly what I was doing. Even if I didn't write about the entire day, a paragraph contains enough information to kickstart the brain into filling the gaps. So reading, yes, but writing as well. Journal writing since I was 18, pushing 60 years old now. Tried quitting multiple times, but just can't. That bookcase full of notebooks was like a millstone around my neck. Finally burned them all a couple years back. No regrets. Still write daily and burn the journals as I finish them now. Live it up. Write it down. Be interested to read some of those burnt ones. Doubtful. I shredded my old journals. Most of the entries are empty batter about that day's happenings. Sometimes, you'll write vague things thinking you'll remember what you were going through, and you don't. Most days are uneventful. It's the process of releasing and examining your thoughts and emotions that matters. The notebook itself becomes like scrap paper while working on the project that is your life. Your life matters. The scrap paper rarely tells a great story, but your life speaks for itself. It is the greatest piece of art you can create in this lifetime. Working out what I wanted to do with my life. I'm 40 and have no idea. 48 and I'm starting to think that I want to be an astronaut. Or a cowboy. A space cowboy. Thank you for the award. New internet friend. And FYI this was a Steve Miller reference. I'm embarrassed to admit I don't get all the others. The official term is Maurice. Wearing sunscreen every time I go out. This should be higher up. I took quarantine as a chance to take my skin care seriously for the first time in my life. 30s with adult and lifelong acne and scars. I started wearing sunscreen every day even though I'm mostly inside and damn. It's made a huge improvement. I honestly had no idea how much the little bits of sunlight I was getting during the day was affecting how I looked. What has improved? I had skin cancer this year. Minor. Early. Surgical treatment completely got it. But I now have a scar below my eye. Please. Everyone, wear sunscreen, and a hat if you will be out long. Also, brush your teeth. My husband neglected his teeth for years and now has had to have two root canals since quarantine started. Talk about terrible timing, huh. Exercising, could have avoided so much joint and back pain, asthma and self-confidence issues if I started years earlier. It's amazing how much basic stretching and yoga have significantly reduced my back issues. Workout. The best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. It's never too late to start working out. I've been working out three times a week since February 2017 and am in the best shape of my life now. At age 45, 25-year-old me couldn't do a third of what I do now. I can confirm this. My daughter planted a redwood tree seed. It's like six inches tall now. LOL. You don't plant a tree for your generation, but for the next. 25-year-old me would run circles around current me. I'm 26. Taking care of my teeth. I didn't take my dental health seriously when I was young and now I need a decent amount of work done that will likely cost me a lot of money. Same. Hate my teeth now. Ditto. Hence my username. Well if you work hard you can be just ugly. Want to hear some fricked up but that I just learned? It's possible for people to have teeth that are extra susceptible to getting cavities and will get them even if they brush properly twice a day. Yoga made me a much fitter, more confident, and happy person. I started last October on a recommendation from my physical therapist. I had some mystifying back problem that manifested itself in hip pain, like being shot in the hip. Between the sessions and exercises, I added yoga twice a week. If I were going to do anything differently, I'd have stared yoga 30 years ago. I've been pain-free for 10 months. P.S. I see so many other confident and happy people in class, and I'm happy for them. But for me, it's just a long exercise session in a 95-degree studio. While they are in triangle, I'm just a guy with his leg in the air. I honestly read Yoda at first glance. Well, I'm sure becoming a Jedi would provide similar benefits. Buying Apple stock in 2002, or Bitcoin in 2011. 
I discovered Bitcoin in I believe 2009, 2010, whenever it was something like 50 cents a coin. I was underage at the time and needed my parents' approval for any larger purchases, anything over $100. So I asked if they'd let me invest a little bit in this new thing called cryptocurrency and got shot down. Because it was too risky, being a teenager, I quickly forgot and moved on. That is, until 2017 when it had exploded and I realized that for the investment I wanted to make I'd have somewhere around $25 million in Bitcoin. I have not let my parents forget this. Even if your parents agreed and let you buy the Bitcoins, the second your profits hit the thousands you would have likely cashed out. There are a lot of people who made good money from Bitcoin, but very few rags to 25 million stories. Exactly when they hit $2,000 for the first time people cashed out. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.